My name is Dave Champlin, and this is about an eight-minute video helping to explain the theory of evolution. In introductory biology textbooks in high school and college, the first chapter sometimes has the statement, evolution is a process and a pattern. The focus of this video is to explain that statement. And we're going to use an example to do that explanation. A snake crawling across desert sands is a process, and the trail it leaves in the sand is a pattern. With regard to evolution, the process is covered. It occurred over hundreds of millions of years, and we weren't there to see it. Imagine the snake crawled through in the night, and we're left with a pattern in the sand in the morning. Consequently, the theory part of the theory of evolution is under here. It's the snake under those hands. The theory part will always be a theory because we weren't there to see it. Just like we'll never be sure if the trail in the sand was caused by a snake last night because we weren't here last night. This pattern is not a theory. Maybe the pattern was caused by a snake last night. Maybe not. But it's not a theory, it's marks in the sand. And similarly, all life and all aspects of life are a pattern. And the pattern is caused by a process. And we can't be sure, but in the case of life, all pattern points to the interpretation that life evolved over hundreds of millions of years. It's all consistent with that. Imagine all the data being consistent with a snake having crawled through here. The trail is uh, not a theory. The pattern is not a theory. In the case of life, much of the evidence comes from the genetic code, the DNA sequence found in the cell of, inside the cell of every living thing. Everybody is comfortable with the significance of that pattern and its usefulness. For example, we're willing to send criminals to jail based on that pattern. Also, we're confident we can identify the father of a baby based on that pattern of DNA sequence. In the same way, we could identify the grandfather and the great-grandfather and on and on. And everybody's comfortable with that logic. We can use a computer to line patterns of DNA sequence up between species. Here's an example of that. And this could show any of thousands of genes aligned between humans and other species. And they always show the same pattern. This could be, for example, the insulin gene found in all vertebrates. And what we always see is that the insulin gene is more similar between some species than others. Consistent always with the pattern that leads to the interpretation that life evolved over hundreds of millions of years of evolution. The pattern and that interpretation is a very powerful scientific tool. It has certainly led to discoveries that have saved the life of every person many times. Everybody's comfortable with the science associated with the pattern and the interpretation of that pattern. This uh, approach is often called the model organism approach. Everybody is comfortable with the idea that we might want to test uh, new medicines on mice before we test them in humans. That's part of the pattern that's observed, and indeed every aspect of life is part of the pattern that's observed like sand in the desert. There's no theory of, uh, involved. Um, it's a pattern, and the pattern is that life appears to evolve have evolved over hundreds of millions of years. It's interesting to note that we can remove one of the hands covering the process and we can watch the snake's tail wiggle because everyone's also comfortable with microevolutionary processes and we can observe those just like we could observe the snake's tail wiggling. Examples of those include uh, domestic animal breeding leading to the evolution of all the dog breeds we have today. They also include the admonishment from your doctor to take all of a prescription of an antibiotic so that the uh, bacteria doesn't become antibiotic resistance, resistant through evolution. It also explains 
basically why every person dies of AIDS because the HIV virus evolves inside each person. It also explains much of the food we eat, the result of microevolutionary processes through centuries of plant breeding. So everybody's comfortable with the pattern, everybody's comfortable with this part of the process, and indeed we can remove even more of our fingers from over the snake because this is where the record of fossils over long geological time fits into the story. And so we can do this. And that's where we stand with regard to the theory of evolution. It will always be a theory because the snake is partially covered up. It's not completely covered up. And most significantly, there's a pattern that has been left in the sand. And the pattern is consistent with the interpretation that all life evolved over hundreds of millions of years. And that interpretation has a powerful experimental utility in discovering new ways of, of, of protecting our planet and our health. There are many, many stories that can be told about the pattern. And the next video in this series is about the pattern of development that occurs in all animals and is coded for in the genes that we inherit from our parents. Here's an image showing an example of that. Here, these different species uh, are represented as having uh, uh, genes that are in common based on DNA sequence uh, and comparisons in their pattern, just like for forensic evidence at a crime scene. The matching boxes show genes that are shared in common between these all, all these animals. The boxes are called Hox genes, and the Hox genes are responsible for setting up the head and tail end of every animal. And the interpretation is that we see that pattern today in living organisms, and it's completely consistent with the interpretation that those organisms evolved over hundreds of million years of evolution, and the changes in the body plan that we see from anterior to posterior are due to changes in this Hox gene cluster over long periods of time. Thanks.